Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Behind the Group podcast. I am DJ Keo. And I am Basil Barrington, and we are back for another movie review. Um, well, uh, this is series, actually a, TV a yeah, TV series. <laughs> and this is like, listen, this is the first AMC Plus film or episode or TV yeah, show that, that we, we are watched. reviewing. And yeah. um, we are talking about Moonhaven. IMDb gave this a 4.8. 4.8. Uh, I I get why people are annoyed. Like, I I totally get that. (laughs) I know why people would be like, I I don't know about this show. Um, 4.8. Here's the thing. Like, this is the type of show I would watch just in general. Because I I like sci-fi, you know, like The Expanse, Star Wars, Star Trek. I like all that kind of stuff. And, you know, here's a show that's kind of in space. It's dealing terraforming the moon. You got scientists, you got new technologies, and it's in the future. All that kind of stuff interests me. Just by, in general, I would watch this anyway. Even, even if we weren't reviewing it, i watch it. But it, it's a tough watch. I'll, I'll put it like that. Yeah, it <laughs> there, is. There's the, the people of the moon are extra corny and annoying. Their rituals and they want to do a dance every time. Like, I was just like, ah, come on, man. Like, stop. We got, we got a mystery to solve Please, here. Like, can we get stop it with it. the dancing? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, get, get get to it, man. Get to the mystery. Let's go. We, All this are dancing right and no DJ, though? Where's the DJ? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, Everybody's you know, like vaulting. There's too much vaulting. dancing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What's going there's, on? There's, there's, there's too much. Yeah. They, they're doing a window dressing. Whatever they're doing. Like, they, they got to cut that out. Yeah. I, get, I get the concept because the idea is supposed to be, you know, if you had scientists in a com, commune or whatever in the future, 100 years from now, you know, like they would come up with wacky ideas or whatever. Like this is what's gonna happen. Like this is what Berkeley's like right now. <laughs> you go to Berkeley, they're 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 dancing around in circles with daisies right now. You said like Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, MIT's got stuff like this all the time. You know, like you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, these types of people, they're gonna come up with these weird things. Like that that's true. The Especially a hundred years of in the future. Aquarius. I kept thinking about the seventies <laughs> when I saw this joint. I was just like flower yeah. tiles, you know, flower yeah, children. Exactly. And, I'm like, exactly. what is going on with this show? It, here's the thing yeah. about this show, right? Moon Haven. Mm-hmm. It is corny as heck. It is corny. It, Bruh, is, it corny. is corny. <laughs> it is super cheesy. Totally yeah. super cheesy. Let me ask you this be- before I even finish. Mm-hmm. Is there any similarities to Moon Haven, Foundation, or The Expanse? I think so. Cause like you know like it, all these things are in the future, and you know Moonhaven is it's weird and corny because you know these guys as they're trying to portray these guys as naive, and so they made them do the weird dances. So they're like, yeah, we're really naive, <laughs> right? We're we're <laughs> we're children basically, but we're smart, and so like they're trying to give that thing like because you know the the story uh, follows to the detectives not even detectives they're detectives and they don't know how to solve any crimes because they never had any crimes <laughs> yeah they never had any crimes mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like kadeem harrelson he doesn't have the glasses on i didn't even know that away. was kadeem i was like he looks familiar and i was like whoa kadeem blew up yeah, you, need his, you need his glasses you need the pop of glasses right oh, boy's been eating a lot of pizza a lot of <laughs> buffalo wings Yo, jerk chicken good. sandwiches which i love bro, bro he's eating good but like yeah you know? so like you know they're, they're super naive and like it's trying to give you this kind of uh you know the earth is like grimy it's, it's hood on earth and these guys are from the suburbs like that's what they're trying to give you like that vibe and like I, I think they went a little bit overboard with it they could have pulled that back a little bit like i, I got it you're naive from the beginning just say that just say we're <laughs> we're naive up here we don't we don't have to deal with you earth stuff Exactly. That's all you got to say. I'm like, you okay, wanna, cool. I got it. <laughs> you want to give a brief overview? I mean, the overview, brief overview. And then we can just I mean, yeah, we got to be extra brief. And then we can talk about aspects of the show. So basically, our Earth is messed up, which is another, uh, it's a trope that's in a lot of these future shows that Earth is just ruined and is a pile of rubble and yeah. everyone savages down there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, they basically got to all the smart people together and like, hey, we're going to 
put a supercomputer on the moon, but we don't want to have access to it. And we want you guys to come up with solutions to solve all the Earth's problems. You know, like pollution, clean the water, crime, uh, sustainability for food, crime, mm-hmm. all that stuff. They're just going to come up with concepts and gonna do it on the moon away from Earth so we can't corrupt it. And so the, sto- the story is about a pilot and she, she's supposed to take up this envoy who's like an ambassador from Earth to the moon. And she's supposed to take her up there. And she discovers that her mother and her sister died. And like that's a, a wild coincidence that this pilot this happened to this pilot. And so right. the envoy is up there. And uh, she's having a, a bit of a political struggle with the person who's running the moon right now. Was it Mighty or something? Mighty, Mighty, Mighty. Mighty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just know her from Vanessa from Daredevil, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, she's uh, she's uh, she's trying to c- keep control over the moon, and the envoy is trying to take control over her back from the moon. High jinks ensue. That's the story of the show. That right? is basically <laughs> it. Now I've noticed that this movie, this show is like so many other shows. I was watching yeah. a super cheap, I can't even remember the name of it, but I think it was seven mm-hmm. episodes. And I think it's a um, a Canadian show. And it's mm-hmm. basically these older people on some planet, right? Because mm-hmm. Earth is completely destroyed, right? It's a War trope. Everyone's everything. got this trope. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, after like a hundred years of like being on this other planet, the mm-hmm. adults decide to send the kids down to the planet to see if it's oh, okay. Oh, 100, 100. 100, yes. Yeah. Corny, yeah. cheesy. Extra right? corny. Extra They're corny, dancing too. Extra cheesy. <laughs> exactly. They're doing the tribal dances too, you know, with no DJ. Yeah. yeah. And, I've yeah. S- and I've seen another show like that where the earth was destroyed. They sent the kids mm-hmm. back to make sure everything was okay, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. We actually reviewed a film where... um. You know, what was the name of that film where old girl was, it was basically a water planet and, you know. They oh, this is a colony. Down. Yeah, colony. colony. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's the same, same concept. Same, same concept. Same right, concept. exactly. Yeah, literally so it's just same. like, okay, so this is sort of something that's in that genre, you know, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm like, okay, well, maybe this could be interesting. And um, yeah, I don't know, outside man. This the, is, outside of the moon part, like everyone's mm-hmm. like on another planet and they send their people back. Yeah. Or like a hundred is in the space station. They send their people back. Right. It's the same concept. The only thing that's different is the supercomputer. Right. That's the only thing that, that separates it from the other show. But it's literally the same thing. Right. You know, exactly. So, um, so yeah, like I said, Moonhaven, if, to me, it was like um, super corny, super cheesy. Mm-hmm. However. Very cheesy. However, I, I, I just I wanted to see more. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Right? This is it's I, this is the one thing about this show is it's interesting, and it picked up pretty quickly. Like yeah. there, you know, once you had the murder mystery thing, I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm invested in this. I want to see what happens here. And then you started talking about aliens. I was like, okay, where's this going? <laughs> Let's see more of this. And right. uh, yeah, like they started to have factions and they're doing shootouts and stuff. I was like, okay, all right, I, all right, I like where this show's going now. But before, when it started, I was like, ah, ah, I think this is a bad pick on my part. I don't know. Yeah. And it got, it got, it got kind of interesting. I like the uh, Mighty. I like her. I like her character. Mighty I like the envoy. Voss. Yeah, I like the envoy. Her character's interesting because now she's a double agent. Spoilers. Adira <laughs> uh, Mar. <laughs> yeah. Indira. Yeah, everyone's got these spa- everyone's right. got space names except for Paul. Paul's got a regular name. Paul, like his name like, is Wish. How can you have? A- and then his <laughs> wife's name is Lone, right? Yeah, it's just everyone's like- got space names except Paul. Paul's a regular dude, and Bella. Oh. Bella's normal. Bella Sway, but Bella Sway <laughs> is a dope name, and her sister's name is Chill Spin. <laughs> yeah, these are rapper names, right? <laughs> these are like performers, these are girl- <laughs> you know. Yeah, these are girl rapper names, right? <laughs> Bella Spin, dude. I may have to vix uh, Bella Spin, uh, <laughs> Bella Sway. I mean, because Bella Sway is a dope name. It's a dope name. That's the name it's you get a, a tattoo name. of, like it was Bella Sway, yo. Like- <laughs> Bella Sway, for real. You know, you can be an we artist. We performing at the Apollo, right? <laughs> right. Then you have Arlo. Another dope name, very basic, is Tom Schwartz. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the guy who that Joe plays, you know, and I'm just like Tom yeah. Schwartz. That sounds like 
you know, some sort of a spy <laughs> that's name a, or that's a regular you know, ass name, mate. <laughs> right, exactly. Like Tom Bob with Johnson. two M's though. Tom with two M's. He's got two M's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it special. Elna, it's like candy you know, with the I instead of a Y. Like. <laughs> Wild Child, Fritz, you have uh Tycho, you have Wish mm. and Blue. Um in uh I've heard Jate. Blue before. Yeah, Jate. And uh all these weird names. Um Arlo, which was Kadeem Hardinson, um, and um yeah, yeah, everyone's got space names. Yeah. Strago, that's a space name. Like yeah. you just you do some words together, letters. Exactly. You know, the thing about Moonhaven is this, right? Mm-hmm. And I agree with a lot of comments that uh, I was reading, but mm-hmm. the Moonhaven the Moonhaven storyline is really good. Yes, it's they interesting. Do, they do a really good job at storytelling here. It's this is excellent. This may be you know, someone mm-hmm. said this may be the best story, sci-fi story that they've ever mm-hmm. like seen. You know, the it's problem a, it, is it's a compelling story, but that, a, the yeah, mm-hmm. you put it together cheesy though, and maybe it's budget. Right. I don't know yeah. what it is. Well, the writers, it looks low budget. It looks low budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for you sure, it, looks, it definitely looks like a TV show. It doesn't feel like a movie, but like yeah, the concept here of you know the supercomputer and you know solving world problems with it and like the the stuff that they're doing up there, like they have, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Paul was talking about, you know, first they had metal and they got rid of the metal and they decided to make everything around wood and make it earthy and more natural. And like they were thriving through that stuff. Like th- these are interesting concepts. I would like to see what happened with the metal, you know, like what, what happened or, you know, what yeah. was it like space station-esque or was it too, you know, it, it wasn't warm. There's no feeling there. Like they're, the concepts are interesting. The supercomputer, though, is the most interesting part about this. Now, they don't show you it. <laughs> they just tell you it's there and go yada, yada, yada. You know, it's like, um, what's that TV show that was on? Um, it was about the supercomputer and they, oh, this, this girl was working there. Ah, I forgot what it was called. It was a TV and, show. Um, yeah, it was a TV show. It was a mm-hmm. series. And this girl, she got a, it's kind of like working at uh, like Google or whatever. And it was, it was in, was it San Francisco in the future? Oh, are you talking about devs? Yes, exactly. That's what it reminded me of. The supercomputer reminded me is, of that. Devs is awesome. I, I so want the second season of devs. You What happened to devs? All right, we're, gonna get, we're getting off tangent. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get back into the thing. Okay, so like the concept of the supercomputer, and I thought was interesting is they were like, okay, we're not going to make this like a big brother or whatever. So it's not really watching us, but it is looking out for us. Yeah. Because you can't use certain weapons and, you know, it's regulating the, I guess it's regulating the airflow and that kind of stuff. And it's moving the terrain around, which I have lots of questions about how you can do that. But all right, science, sci-fi. <laughs> and, you know, like, so all that kind of stuff is interesting. Then you have uh, what was it, the marker that's in their back that keeps track of the people. And apparently a lot of people took them out. Yeah. So that's interesting. <laughs> there were I mean, piles of these markers on the ground. There like, was a whole wow, bucket full of is, them. Yeah. I there's mean, a lot of there's a lot of sleeper agents in the on the moon right now. And then so Arlo like, with the arm, you know, what's up with that? Yeah, you got a robot arm. I got I, yeah. I have lots of questions. They gave you a basic, basic idea of some stuff. They never filled in the gaps. So because it's popular, we're gonna get a second season. I would like to see where this goes. And I, I hope they fill in more backstory and make this thing more interesting than it is. Like, cause the story's interesting. The execution is basic. terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> it's basic, dude. It is completely terrible. Now, like I said, you know, and like you also said, they did pick up a second mm-hmm. season, right? Um, yeah. The season finale ended kind of weird. Right, she went into that forest. I did not like that season you know, finale. I'm just like, really? I was like, I mean, dude, like, when it ended, I was like, this is it? <laughs> dude, we got so much stuff to talk about. This is right. it? So they're calling this a it sci-fi wasn't even like, show. It wasn't even a cliffhanger. She just walked in the woods and they're like, right. then we're then. You know, I didn't see anything coming from Earth to the moon. I didn't see any, like, serious space uh, visuals, you know. Yeah, Again, well, the story you know, you see the, is in awesome. the beginning, mm-hmm. yeah, in the beginning, you see her, she's taking the subway or whatever to the the right. airplane hangar mm-hmm. he kind of got the sci-fi element from the space that was it that was it that's that was kind of it and that it, was it. it's kind of it's kind of like magic basically what they're doing on the moon is magic that's not right. sci-fi 
Right. There, there's, but, there's no explanation for how they're doing it. It's just they're just magical. Going to forest. The forest is you can see visions and stuff in the forest. Like that's magic. That's not sci-fi. Right. It, it also it's uh it's kind of uh interesting because one, this is the most popular AMC plus um original show, period. It is mm-hmm. thus far. You can tell this was a very low budget, right? Um, yeah, they there is they're saving their shekels for... <laughs> right, which is why you didn't see a lot of space show, you know, space scenes or things like that. Those mm-hmm. are really expensive. They can like add up, right? So it was just like Yeah, yeah. If you do this... it was real quick. Mm-hmm. Right. It was shot in Dublin. This was shot in Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> so it was on yeah. location as well. So I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay, well, we have this one moon haven shot. There were like some loopholes too, like um just some cliffhangers or just some cliffs. It's just like, okay, we have an um mm-hmm. the, the name of the AI is IO. Where is the mm-hmm. supercomputer? Where is it? Right? It's it's in the that's is that like, thing that the hologram that pops up that looks like a question mark. That's the that's that's where it is. Okay, so if this um AI, why can't this AI figure out that hey, there's a rebellion on this planet? We need to do something about it as AI. <laughs> you know, why didn't the well, AI the figure AI, out? The AI doesn't have any power, it just tells you this is what's going on. Cause like the envoy knew well, okay, because the envoy is a double agent, so she's not a good narrator. Yeah. You can't tell her what she's saying is true or not. But it, the envoy said basically that there is gonna there, there's gonna be trouble and he need to replace uh Mighty. He had to replace her and put the new person in there, which is was a Sandra, Sanda, San- whatever her name Sanda. is. Sanda. Mm-hmm. Sanda. Yeah, they're gonna replace her with Sanda. She's gonna take over because she's part of Rebellion too. Yeah, she and is. Uh, that so Envoy and Sanda are they're gonna start running things and they're gonna get rid of Mighty because Mighty knows what's going on and she's against it. Right. So there's two factions here. Uh, I don't know how they're gonna stop these guys with g- kung fu. I guess I don't know what they're gonna do to stop everybody. <laughs> they have no weapons. You know, only Tom Schwartz has a weapon, and Sanda actually was dating. She had an affair yeah. with Tom. Yeah, Tom she's Schwartz, having a dog, you know? Tom. Yeah, Tom so. got that, that dream cocktail. He was high as hell right there. <laughs> <laughs> got the like Pill Cosby popping off. You're there, right. You know? Yo, he took that extra dose. The Pill man. Cosby. <laughs> Drop it so, in like... next morning. <laughs> you're making blueberries. I don't get this. Blueberry muffins. Right. <laughs> right. So like the, the other thing is interesting, like how they're healing these cells with the tree. Like that's interesting. They yeah. could explain that a little bit more. Like where's, the, where's this concept going? You know going? what I'm saying? It's Talk a little again, about it. Like I said, you know, the story itself is super interesting, but they left out a lot of visuals, man. And it's just like, okay, so if they were picked yeah. up for a second season, you got to give them some more money so we can understand what's going on, right? Because well, right I think now, that, we don't know what's going on. It's ambitious, what they're talking about right now. You got a rebellion on Earth and on the moon. You have these guys going back to the planet. Like, this, it's ambitious. There's a lot of stuff to film. And so... They probably should have narrowed the story and just talk to the pilot and the police and focus on that and then get to the earth on the second season or whatever. But like they're mm-hmm. doing everything all at once. And so because of that, you can you gotta shrink it down. And it's only six episodes. Right. So you gotta shrink down what where this thing's going, what it's doing. Like you gotta you have to tone everything down to just make it more focused because you don't have that much money to do it. I don't know. I get the, I like the concept. I really do. And especially, it's right up my alley with the moon and everything. It's right up my alley. I love all this stuff. So space travel. I have to say though, she's flying the plane with the rings. I was that was why, why that, do that? Okay, okay. <laughs> this is corn in the cob. You, you don't fly with anything then. That was her flying a plane with the rings was she's so the rings. <laughs> corny. It was so corny. I was just like, okay, this is low budget. This is what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Like you can't get a Logitech joystick and just put it on the front. You have everything else in the ship. Just throw something right there. Like make it it, it seems silly. I don't know. I mean, they spent more money on the white seats on that plane, that spacecraft, because they were really <laughs> nice and big. I was like, wow, yeah. this is first class. The spacecraft, right here, you know? the spacecraft looked really good. I yeah. liked it. It had the atmosphere, everything. It felt it felt right. And, and the I'm rings like, were like the I, rings were just I, so. I know ridiculous. you're. This is future, yeah, and you no. know space. This is how we fly. If you no, 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 that's dumb. It looks dumb. dumb. And you know why it's dumb? If you get any kind of turbulence, whatever, you go throw these wings in the window. Like right. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. gonna go flying. Like Super dumb. that's stupid. 
you need a central access point. Like, there's a dumb way to fly a plane. Right. I don't know. know, future guys, that's a terrible idea. Terrible. And then the rings will go, too. It's just like, why isn't it the same color as something silly. else? That was super She just picked up the rings, and she's know. like, dee, dee, dee. <laughs> and, and, you know, and again, like I said, you know, they uh, the story is great. The visuals, they just lacked with the visuals, right? Because everything you can was only shot do so much. on... Everything yeah. was shot on Moonhaven, so... It was, mm-hmm. it was, it felt low budget. It looked low budget. It wasn't big, big, bang, bang. You know, it wasn't anything like that. Yeah, no. I, it's a TV I, show. I would be like, surprised. I would be surprised if um, this entire mm-hmm. first season cost $50 million. I would be totally surprised. <laughs> well, know, it, it costs it something, anything. though, because there's on a location. lot of special effects. Yeah, I know, but they, there's still special effects throughout the show. Like, it costs something. For sure, yeah. it costs something. You know, but, and it's um, AMC Plus. It's not even AMC, so like you know, they're they they're limited to what they could do. Because yeah. AMC does is Walking Dead still on TV? Um, I know it's AMC on AMC was AMC killing Plus, it. You know, AMC was killing it for a minute because they had Walking Dead, they had uh, Mad 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 Men. Mad Men was dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lodge, Lodge forty nine or forty six supposed to be really good too. Yeah, they, they had a bunch of shows. AMC was killing it. They were doing pretty good. But, like, we're getting off tangent here. The, it was the show, budget-wise, it was a little too ambitious for what they are capable of doing. And I think the tone was just, is just silly and naive. I I know you got a Hobbit in there, so they're trying to give you Hobbit vibes. But, like, come on, man. Like, it's just... <laughs> It's not gonna work. Mary is not gonna save you right now, right? It's not, no, it's not gonna work. Um, you know, yeah, okay. you gotta vibe it down, like tone it down. Okay, so Moonhaven, give me your best character for the entire first season of Moonhaven. I liked Mighty. I thought Mighty was interesting. She's she's compelling because you know, like she's cut. She's super. Like she has that vibe of like oh, I believe everything is going. On. Also, I know more than you guys do about what's really happening down here. Right. And uh, yeah, like so, like she's a uh, she's an interesting character. Now, I will say this though: the way they talk drove me crazy. Like that, the the was a dread feel and all this other stuff. Like just stop it. Just talk normal English. Like just stop it. Like, <laughs> oh, it's so weird I know it's the future <laughs> and yada yada yada. You're gonna come up with new slang. You know, like a perfect example of this is uh, in um, the Expanse. They had their own slang for the Belters, right? And you know, like it didn't bother me as much as this slang did for how these guys are talking. It just seems silly. Yeah, it's like it's silly for no reason for how they're talking. I, I get why they did it, but it was just silly for no reason. So I, I don't know. Like maybe tone that down a little bit for the next season. Like it's. Especially because you can deal with Earth and uh, all the people that went down there for the first wave. You got to deal with that, too. Yeah. I am going to give um, my best character is a package deal. So Mm -hmm. I have like a bunch of characters I'm all going to name as my best character. So that would be Bella Sway, Mm -hmm. Paul, Mm -hmm. Arlo, and Elna. Elna is the little girl, remember? Yeah, I like I like Ella. Ella's cool. Elna, I was like, wow, we have kids mm-hmm. in this show. And not they are annoying. not screaming and they are not annoying. And they're annoying. useful. <laughs> and Elna, not annoying and they're went, useful. The, yeah. Elna was she was doing recon, dude, on a ship. Come on. And she got off the ship no problem. I was and like, she got off the trip with you. no problem. Now I like <laughs> Bella Sway you. because in the beginning, the first episode, I was like, I, I, I may not like this character. She, her character Yeah, we talked be, about this off air. She's yeah. very mm-hmm. sassy. It's too it sassy. May be, she may be as annoying as the character on, um, what was it, um, Halo. Um, mm-hmm. You know, um, Quan. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I she was getting like, there for me. She was, she it was, was, it was up there. there. And then as the episodes went on, I was like, okay, she's calming down a little bit. She's understanding. She's getting, she's coming mm-hmm. into her role i was like okay cool so those are my four best characters i'm just going to do a package deal now your worst mm-hmm. character of moonhaven season one who um i don't know, like bella was annoying to me but she got better so i don't it's not like a worst it was just more of annoyance yeah because she got better as the show went on and she wasn't annoying she's she was like aware She's self-aware, streetwise. I respect that as a character, because you know, like you, you always being like surprised, like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this happened to me!" Like, 
that's so stupid. Like, and um, yeah, I would say Bella is like not annoying. Uh, like, just okay, not worse, but just like annoying but better. She's improved greatly. And I think that by the second season, I'm gonna like her more so. But like, that would be my character uh, as the main character line. Who who's your worst character? Okay, so this is the thing that's really interesting and a little um, strange as well, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have any worst characters. That's what I'm saying, right? This show is, it's super interesting, but it's also Mm -hmm. super corny and super cheesy. Yeah. But I want more. (laughs) I want to see more, right? I'm. I, it's a compelling show. It's very interesting to me. I don't know like, why. I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the worst character, and I'm like, well, I actually like Bella, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I guess if I had to pick one, it may be Chill Spin because she comes in every now and then with her goofy self and, like, hey, you know, starts talking all this ghibli, you know, this googly <laughs> gop, and I'm just it's like, like, just like ghibli juice, saying? yeah. What is she yeah, saying, yeah. you know? But I can deal with her, so... Yeah, that's that's what I mean, man. You know, this show it's it's like a curveball ball. You know, it's just like, wow, this mm-hmm. is a corny or even a stupid show, low budget show, but yeah. You kind of want to see more. This is um it it's interesting. It, that's the best yeah. way to describe it. It's interesting, especially for you know, sci-fi, even though it's not a lot of sci-fi. It's more yeah. <laughs> We got to tell it's it's magic, right? Cuz they, yeah. they don't explain anything. How how the moon get? Because uh, they they basically terraform a good chunk of the moon. They got flowing water. They got animals like up there. Know. How like sway? Know how that happens? That, that's yes. magic. That is yeah. magic. That's not science. That's all magic. And you have like uh like the tree where the like the it's got like the bloodlines on the tree. That's yeah. magic. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. not that's not science. I would also like to know who developed the AI. I mean, was it developed mm-hmm. on Earth and brought up to the moon, or how how does this happen? You yeah, know? I think I think they're alluding to that. Like, it's kind of uh, it's not clear exactly how how it got started. Uh, the interesting too the thing about the the way they had like a rebellion initially, and and because you know everyone got into factions, that's interesting. Yeah. And they you know also talk like, about the aliens too. Like, there may be aliens on the moon. I mean, okay, so. I, that is are interesting. They, are they coming from a different planet? Are they native to the moon? What's going on? I, right? I, I got questions. I got lots of questions. Yeah. You know, and I'm just trying to figure out how are they going to get all these things into like these short seasons of like six, you know, episodes. Yeah, six episodes is pretty short. Like, I yeah. I, I, I think it could have gone longer and it needs to end better than it did. It did not end well at all because I, I was like, wait, what? That's it? Is only six? I thought, <laughs> is there another episode? Like, what's happening here? I like it. Didn't, the, um, it didn't end well. Yeah, I like the six episode seasons, but I, you I like have it to short. Pack them in, like you know, yeah. Like I was telling you about Loki, six episodes, but they got a mm. lot in, right? And they showed us a lot. If you're gonna do six episodes, you have to be mm-hmm. really, really strategic about how and when you're going to show things. Yeah. I thought that um, Kenobi was kind of corny throughout the entire show. I it's mean, you only had corny. the first <laughs> and last episodes that were really kind of exciting, right? You mm-hmm. know, yeah. everything in between, you know, Kenobi was a bumbling, you know, former, you trash. know, Jedi, which was like a mess. Right? <laughs> Absolute trash. Yeah. It was trash, right? So it's here a waste we have, of episodes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Come on. And then you have like Moonhaven, and it's just like, again, the story, the storytelling is mm-hmm. awesome it's just the execution of putting it together yeah, execution not good it's execution not good, is not good. Not I, good. they have something they have a winning set of hands here there's something good and you know they just gotta polish it up and figure things out a little bit better but i think there's something here there's yeah. definitely something here and it, it kind of reminded me of stranger things i don't know if you've seen them like the last season season four but they were doing like first the first couple of episodes, like I think up to six, where it's like an hour long. Episode seven is like an hour and a half. Episode eight is like two hours, and episode nine is like two and a half hours. But it wasn't boring. Like the way they did the storytelling was spectacular, man. And like yeah, that's the, when that it comes right. down to execution. So yeah. you have a show about some kids who were in the eighties, and you made it two and a half hours long, and it feels like a half an hour. You're like, I want more of this. 
Yeah. It was it was just, it was moving quick, and then the story was good, the acting was good, and like th- this show has elements that could get to where Stranger Things level because like yeah. the elements are really good, the concepts are good, the storyline is good. You got the murder mystery stuff, you have aliens, you have a faction of a civil war going on on Earth and the Moon. These are all great things. Like yeah. I'm like hell yeah, I want more of all this stuff. I, I but think, like you um... know. Yeah. execution they gotta they gotta polish execution it up better is, is uh weird i think that um if you gave this story to like an apple tv plus or you know an amazon or maybe um even a netflix and you know you may have a, a it different... depends on who's doing it <laughs> yeah you know i mean but but like... i would imagine apple tv would probably get it out the park and if you had the same people doing the expanse like doing this on amazon mm-hmm. You may hit it out the park too, but it's kind of disappointing yeah. that the show like transpired this way, you know, just like, oh, this is great. And it then all of ends. a sudden you had these <laughs> like, you know, these holes and I'm just like, oh my goodness, this is, this show could be so much better. It could be so much better. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you going to rate season one Moonhaven? How are you rating this show? Um, I give it like a 6.5. Okay. Uh, and I, it would be higher if they toned down the corn, and I think that if they focused on one storyline more, more so, like just get tight into it, I, I think it would have been. Uh, it could have gone higher. Also, it should have had like maybe two more episodes, one or two yeah. more episodes. And yeah, kinda, this this would have been great as like eight it. episodes. You know. Yeah, I think it probably needed a couple more episodes to just kind of get everything everything you wanted out because they each show is like 45 minutes so yeah if it had just a couple more elements i could have easily gave it like a seven or eight yeah because like everything here i like these are all things up right up my alley i love things in space i love sci-fi i love things in future technology all that stuff i love just by default i was gonna hit you seven points just by default and it it's just like, ah, man, he's, he kind of lost a couple of points just because of how it was done and how it yeah. ended. The ending bothered me so much because yeah, I watched yeah. the ending again t- this morning before we started doing the podcast. And I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> why yeah. would you end it like this? It's not a cliffhanger. Like, there's nothing because they, they landed on Earth. Everything's fine. They got away. Apparently, all the ships landed fine. And then she, Bella's like, I'm going to go walk in the woods and I'm going to find Mighty and my mom. All right. That's, That's not a cliffhanger. <laughs> That's cliffhanger is like somebody shot. Oh, my God. What's going to happen? Yeah. Cliffhanger is like, we got cut off. We're in space. We run out of air. That's a cliffhanger. Exactly. She's like, I'm going to walk in the woods. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I am going to give Moonhaven season one a 6.5 also. Mm. And... Again, I like the story. I really like the story. The The storytelling is awesome, right? Mm -hmm. The execution of it, you know, the visuals, you know, um, the non-space visuals, right? I mean, this is sci-fi, right? Um, And, you know, also just I want to know where the AI came from. I want to know where are the AI servers. Yeah, get, in, get into that. Get I want to know. Story. Right. I want to know, um, you know, when Mighty fell down this like pit of like fog, what is that? Mm-hmm. Right. I want to know what that is. Right. Um, it reminds you of Lost. Or it's, it's all these right, mysteries. Right, exactly. <laughs> I would like to know to how, <laughs> how Bella Sway, how her military um, duties went down. You know, she was presumably mm-hmm. a soldier, you know, a, just a killing machine. I want to know more about that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's a they, it's a lot that's missing here. I am going to put this in the category of cheesy but good. It's super mm-hmm. cheesy. It's super it's corny. It's very cheesy. It's just so corny. But yeah. this show has so much potential, dude. Keo, mm-hmm. this show has a lot of potential. Yes, you know, it has a, a lot, lot go, of potential. You could go in a lot of places and make this show amazing on a yeah. level. Yeah, for like, sure. You could do that. This show Just has like, a lot know, of potential. The, I like it. Simple stuff like they should have shot video of the airplanes that were uh, hovering because they were in the air for like three days, two days, yeah. or whatever. You could have had like, we're running out of food. We got to get, we got to land soon. Like you could have had that whole aspect of it too. 
didn't even right. film that. <laughs> and That's then something re- that should have been in there. And then remember when the planes left um, Moonhaven and went to Earth, there was like supposed to be some sort of a rebellion there. So they got like yeah, word you out. You that know? too. I wanted to see that. You know, they only yeah, showed a part should've... where they landed and now they had like some rafts and they were, you know. Were yeah, and they came with some technology. Right. And, and they got like, to the beach or whatever. And you see like right. a destroyed city. But like. You should have showed the rebellion on Earth. You should have showed the what was going on with the the pilots in the air. Like, or they, yeah. did you need to land right now? Because like it's like an airplane. Like we're gonna run out of food. We gotta turn around. We gotta make a decision. We got like three days left. That could have added to the suspense. Because basically, they're like, we got four days to do this, and there was zero suspense about the four days because you didn't know what's happening. <laughs> zero. But like, like zero, if you dude. if you show what was going on, on Earth and you show what's going on with the pilots, you could have been like, oh damn, time's running out. We gotta go. Like. We gotta figure this out. That could have added so much to the storyline, but they didn't even film it. Yeah. Like I don't maybe they maybe they did film and they just cut it for time, but that's the kind of stuff you can't cut. You need these elements in there. That's what gets on the execution. It's not the story. The storyline is interesting. I like story, where this thing's yeah. going. Story but like the execution not could right. have been just done a little bit better. Like when when the guys went to the tree and they wanted to see their bloodline, like people should have been fighting over that to see where, right. where, where families are from, whatever. Yeah. That could have been a, a huge thing right there and like cause upheaval on the moon. Like there's so many things that you could have done. Everyone's staying in the civil, single file line just waiting. These guys block it off from you. are like, hey, all right. <laughs> like yeah. what, what was that? Like, I think um... this is a... I think the budget has a lot to do with like the visuals, you know. So hopefully, yeah. But you, you just have to have a couple people hold some collars, like, "Hey, man, I want to see the tree." That's like I show, <laughs> like people yelling, like, "Can I see the tree?" Like, <laughs> you could have done that, like something. Just get suspense and element of like energy to it. Like it's just everybody's like super chill. I was worried about anybody on the show. Yeah. Hopefully, now that um, AMC Plus has seen that, wow, this is the most popular show on AMC Plus, and they renewed uh, a second season, maybe they'll throw mm-hmm. more money at it, and maybe we'll get a bit more visuals that you know go hand in hand with the actual storyline because the visuals, yeah. they just in the storyline, they just don't connect for me, you know. They have to do better execution. Yeah. It's a waste of you have a supercomputer that you never show. Is it making decisions? Like, how does it work? It's weird. So it's just watching everybody around there, but not really watching them. Like, how does this thing work? Yeah. I need more details about this supercomputer so I can care about it. Yeah. Like, are people on the moon trying to destroy it? Or are, are people on Earth trying to get, like, more information yeah. would be helpful. It it's gets, like, makes people care more. It's like Cortana with Halo. Like, I didn't like uh, Cortana in the beginning, but as mm-hmm. they as the story went on, I was just like, oh, I'm starting to like Cortana. Because they're, mm-hmm. they're starting to tell me more about Cortana, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I would love to see and know more about the AI, you know? And it's just mm-hmm. like, we got to know that. You can't leave that out. You got We have to know why the AI was created and mm-hmm. who created the AI. I mean, was it MIT? Was it Berkeley? Was it Stanford? Who created this, you know? I mean, is it the yeah, federal yeah. government? Who was it, you know? So I don't yeah, know, I'll man. Look- the whole planet get together and and like a United Nations type thing, and they put all their people behind to make the right. supercomputer. Mm-hmm. How do the safeguards work? Can they take it over? Like, there's a lot of questions. A lot of questions, dude. But yeah. I am interested in seeing more, and I am interested um, in checking out the second mm-hmm. season whenever they drop that. So we will see. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I am DJ Keo. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace. All right.